Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. How long would it take to fall through the earth? Unveil. Are you a fan of cartoons like I am? If that's the case, then we bet you've seen a number of cartoons suggesting that if you dig a deep hole straight down through the earth, you will end up in China. As interesting and hilarious as this might be, it's not actually true. I mean, who even came up with such a suggestion? Like, China is all the way in the east and America is in the west. In fact, if you start a hole in North America, it will take you to the Indian Ocean. In order to emerge in China, you would have to start digging in Argentina. So now that we made that common misconception clear, we are still stuck with the curious thought. How long would it take to fall through the Earth? The interesting part is that if you fell from Florida to the Indian Ocean, it would take as much time as falling from there to China. In other words, as long as you are falling through some hole in the Earth, it will take the same amount of time to fall. Make sense? If not, then don't worry. We'll dig a little deeper into the seemingly intriguing phenomenon. Let's assume that we have a hole that leads you straight through the center of the Earth and is large enough to comfortably accommodate you while flailing your arms about. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. To keep things simple, because you know how depressing math can be, we will neglect air resistance. But when you start falling, things start changing. As you fall, there is less and less mass between you and the center of the Earth, so there is less and less to pull you down. But wait, you are closer to the center of the Earth. And if you remember your physics quite clearly, the closer you are to what's pulling you, the harder you will be pulled. Acceleration tells you how fast your speed is changing or how quickly you are falling. Newton came up with a mathematical way to relate a force such as gravity and acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. In the case of falling through the Earth, it is gravity that is causing the acceleration, so we say that gravity is the force in this equation. When you are on the surface of the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters squared per second. The acceleration due to gravity depends on the mass that's pulling you. So once you start falling, your acceleration gets smaller. But what happened to your mass? Wouldn't your acceleration depend on whether you packed a few pounds on during summer or not? Well, that's not how it works. You see, it turns out that anyone from Ant-Man to the Incredible Hulk would have the same acceleration if they fell through said hole. Your size doesn't really matter from a theoretical standpoint. This was exactly what Galileo famously demonstrated when he dropped various masses from the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Furthermore, this also shows us that mass which creates gravity is the same stuff that gives you inertia. In fact, this is what made Galileo famous and probably the reason why he's in your history textbook today. Way to go, Galileo! Since the mass and the distance are both changing, there are too many variables you'd have to put into account. Thankfully, human beings discovered an ingenious correlation between mass and distance, and it's called density. Density is the amount of mass of an object divided by the volume occupied by that object. In this case, because we are falling through the hole, we'll be looking at the density of dirt and rock. To make things easier for us, we are going to assume that all of the dirt, rock, and magma in the Earth has the same density. A geologist might call me ignorant, but that's the only way we'll be able to solve our complex mystery. We can rearrange the density equation to say that the mass is density times volume. Therefore, the density of the Earth is the total mass of the Earth divided by its volume. Knowing this and putting in a little bit of math, we will find that the force involved in falling through the Earth will be force equals equation. So now we know what will happen on your way to the center. But what happens when you go flying through the middle of the Earth? Well, we'll find this out after checking out today's best pick of the day. So what is this fella right here up to? It looks like quite the arduous task if you ask me. Of course, he fell, but perhaps doing a little bit of bungee jumping. Either way, we bet his adrenaline was through the roof. 
So now, you have gravity trying to pull you back towards the center and it's slowing you down as fast as it speeds you up. And then the whole thing starts all over again. Imagine a native on the surface awaiting your brief visit. They would see you come out of the hole to a height equal to that of which you jumped into it. Pretty interesting, right? They would also hear screaming at a high pitch and then hear it becoming lower as you descended back down. The reason for your screaming will become clear once we do the math. Now, how long would it take to fall through the Earth? The time of one oscillation, which is the time for one round trip through the hole, is called the period. Solving for the period of a gravity hole from scratch requires some pretty nifty mathematics. Luckily, Isaac Newton wrote the first book on calculus called The Principa. And fortunately for us, he gave us a way to find the period. In the case of the gravity hole, the period of your falling oscillation is 2 equals 2 pi equation. The period is a round trip and hence twice the amount of time it takes to travel through the Earth. So we will need to divide the period by 2. Before we plug in the numbers, notice that it doesn't matter how heavy you are. Big or little, you take the same amount of time to fall. In fact, you will feel weightless as you fall. Which will make for a pretty great ride, huh? Even the amusement rides at Disneyland won't match up to the sheer thrill and intensity of falling through the Earth. The acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per square second, and the radius of the Earth is 6.378 million meters. This means that you would fall through the entire Earth in only 42 minutes. Can you imagine traveling 8,000 miles in less than an hour? Your maximum velocity at the center would be roughly 18,000 miles per hour. That's definitely fast enough to make you scream. What about air resistance? Air complicates the problem tremendously. It makes the equations very difficult to solve and requires a few broad assumptions about the falling object. For instance, the air will travel differently around a large person than a kid. However, air resistance leads to an interesting phenomenon, terminal velocity. The air acts like a frictional force and counteracts the acceleration due to gravity. Without air, an accelerating object will continue to increase its velocity. With air, the frictional drag force increases as the object moves faster. At some velocity, the frictional drag force becomes equally opposed to the gravitational force. The object then coasts at that velocity. This is what is meant by terminal velocity. A typical raindrop falls at about 9 meters per second, while the average person has a terminal velocity of around 56 meters per second. Assuming that you are traveling at this terminal velocity for the duration of your fall, you will arrive in the Indian Ocean after only two and a half days. But on a serious note though, it will be impossible for you to survive falling through the Earth because of the following reasons. Once you start falling about 0.15 kilometers into the Earth, you would encounter about 20 atmospheres of air pressure and would die from hypoxia. The farther your corpse falls, the more it becomes crushed by the intense air pressure. Note that this pressure is from the air itself above you pressing down and not from the rocks. As you can see, you do not make it very far at all in your journey through the Earth before dying. But for the heck of it, let's pretend you have some kind of futuristic pressure suit that can protect you from any amount of pressure. What would happen to you if you fell in the hole with this pressure suit on? Well, after falling about 1.1 kilometers, you encounter a temperature of about 320 Kelvin and would instantly die of heat stroke. After falling a total distance of about 2.7 kilometers, your corpse encounters a temperature of about 400 Kelvin and your bodily fluids begin to boil away regardless of the pressure suit. Upon falling to about 200 kilometers deep, your dried up bones and remnants of flesh encounter a temperature of about 1200 Kelvin and are completely incinerated into dust. Your dust remains then fall the rest of the 6200 kilometers. So it's safe to say that falling through a hole in the earth is a very bad idea. With that being said, we've come to the very end of the video. But before we leave and wrap this video up, we've got a little bit of homework for you. How long do you think it would take for you to fall through one end of the moon to the other? Let us know your thoughts, mathematical wizardry, and guesses in the comments down below. Want more videos that will always exist until the very end of time? Click on any of the videos you see right here on the screen right now 
And as we always say, thank you all so very much for watching this video.